Hi, my name is Phil. I'd like to talk about politics and in this video I'd like to discuss how Chancellor Rachel Reeves has insisted that the budget is now set for this parliament, that there won't be any further tax rises or borrowing. But is it truthful and wise, given that Donald Trump may now have a material and negative impact on the global and UK economy over the next few years? Because on the face of it, seems a little bit reckless. But first, for daily political commentary, please click the subscribe button so you don't miss out. So let's just take stock. So Rachel Reese presented her budget last week. It included a hefty increase in taxes and borrowing, but also commits to real terms increase in spending and investment. Inflation is expected to increase slightly and then drop back down to target. Indeed, the fact that the Bank of England cut interest rates today, as expected, indicates that they're not seeing any problems with the budget and they're certainly not having a knee-jerk reaction to Donald Trump becoming the president. But the IFS have said that Reeves could need another £9 billion of tax rises by the end of the parliament in order to avoid austerity for some departments. Now, being clear, they're not saying Reeves would need another £9 billion. They're just saying she might do. Now, let's just put aside the potential impact of Trump for one moment. I'll bring him back in a minute. As of the start of this week, before we knew who was going to be the president, the IFS thought that Reeves might need £9 billion more in tax rises by 2027, 2028. But Reeves has ruled out further tax rises in a Treasury Select Committee um, meeting yesterday. So logically, I suppose one of two things must be the case. First, Reeves is just calming people down with the expectation that she will be able to raise taxes again in a few years, citing unforeseeable events. Uh, anything she says in a select committee hearing is just, uh, you know, a statement of the position right now. Even if she sort of talks about promising not to increase tax rises, it's not a manifesto promise. Everyone sort of understands if there are extenuating circumstances, blah, 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 blah. The second possibility is she actually does think that she will not have to raise taxes again and that she thinks the OBR forecasts are a little bit too timid and this is why the IFS are being a bit more pessimistic. And Reeves was asked about this in the Select Committee and it seems that the second answer is the most likely, which I suppose is a bit of a relief. She was asked outright if she thought growth would be better than the OBR were forecasting and she said, yes, that's her ambition. Now, obviously, she's not relying on blind faith that somehow the OBR are being pessimistic. This is like a straight-talking woman. This is not Boris the Bonehead Johnson flapping about and talking, you know, of the power of belief. She seemed to allude to the fact that planning reform should unlock more growth uh, that would beat the forecast and within this parliament. See, if you look at the OBR's growth forecast, so they talk about some growth next year, which may now be hit a little bit by Trump, uh, but then pretty much flat for the rest of the parliament. But then, you know, a significant amount of growth in the second parliament, but we have to have an election before then. So Reeves is suggesting that the planning reform should unlock more growth and it would be within this parliament in the next few years. And it could make sense. The OBR have not been able to take account of the planning reforms because they're not out yet. And if they are a, net, a significant net positive to economic growth in the next few years, then Reeves has her better than expected growth and that would unlock more money and that, you know, the IFS would then go, OK, yeah, that makes sense. So no pressure, Angela Rayner and Ed Miliband, because it seems that Labour's hopes rest entirely on them. But I can accept that there are some sources of growth for this parliament, which the OBR were not able to take account of in their report last week. You know, planning reforms is one, the one that Rachel Reeves is leaning heavily on, but also healthcare improvements. If people have quicker access to healthcare, then, you know, they're less likely to be out of work, for example. Maybe even new agreements with the EU. I've sort of thought about this one myself. But then Donald Trump happened. He has suggested hitting China with massive tariffs, which on their own would still hit the UK economy. But if Trump follows through on his boast to slap tariffs everywhere and the world fired back with retaliatory tariffs of their own, you know, we end up in a 
basically a world trade war, then the forecast is for significantly lower growth in the UK. Now, Reeves was asked about this and she said well, it's too early to be adjusting forecasts. Now, that's true in the sense we don't know what Trump will do with tariffs, only what he said he would do. But at the same time, there is still a likelihood that Trump does things which hit our growth potential. Even if we persuade him to steer away from like the craziest policies, he's definitely going to do things that negatively impact our economy because he's definitely going to do things that negatively impact the American economy. So even if we don't know what the figure would be, we know it's going to be a figure. We know it's going to be negative. Is this a problem? Well, let's apply some logic again. If Reeves expects the extra growth from planning reforms to not only cover what the IFS are worried about, but be so good that they'll also take care of any hits to the economy caused by Trump's brain farts. I mean, when Rachel Reeves came up with the budget, there was a risk that Donald Trump would become president, for example. So it could well be that Reeves actually is confident that the budget from last, ro last week is still robust, that there are things the OBR cannot take account of, and she's convinced that they exceed this £9 billion that the IFS are going, you may need, um, as well as the hits to growth that Trump could cause. And But is this the case? Because, you know, it's, it's... I mean, this is only taking into account Trump's trade war policy into account. What if, as well as a trade war, the US pulls out of Ukraine, which is actually more likely, are Labour planning for that? I mean, I'm assuming they are. But what conclusion have they drawn? They presumably don't think every country in Europe is simply going to double its defence budget because that's what would be needed to just simply replace the investment from the US. Would we plan to accelerate the defence of Ukraine by sending in NATO troops? After all, the main block against this has been coming from America. Are we planning on spending the next few years of the Ukraine's budget in a much shorter time to end the war more quickly and directly? But, you know, can we plan for that on our own? I mean, presumably that would need international agreement, even if Trump pulls America out. You know, without answer to these questions, I think it's difficult to see how a decision not to raise taxes further is anything other than a little bit risky, shall we say. Reeves also described the US as the single biggest trade partner for the UK, which is dubious, by the way. You can argue the toss, in all honesty. Uh, but in terms of relevance to the Treasury, I'd say not. See, our trade with the EU is way more than with America, way more. I mean, that's just a fact. But you could argue that technically the EU is not a trade partner in that if you send goods to the Netherlands, uh, you'll have a slightly different experience to sending those goods to Germany because we're not part of the single market, so we have to use Dutch and German and Belgian and so on, their own um, internal means of, of, of importing and they're quite archaic and so some forms will be different some forms and I don't just mean in different languages some requirements will be different the single market harmony only really matters for those inside it however in terms of reducing trade barriers for European trade we are going to be arranging trade deals with the EU for the single market as a whole not for individual countries so in terms of Labour's main ambitions Ray Reeves must see the EU as a single trading partner. So her statement was not really in a practical sense correct and it was definitely not relevant. But nonetheless, she's still emphasising the fact that the US is a major trading partner. So how can she say, even if we don't know the, the figure of how Trump will impact our economy, that it is not going to impact it in a material way, given that she herself is saying it's our most single most important trading partner? I mean, you know, both... And, and the person asking Reeves the question, which prompted this, by the way, was Conservative MP John Glenn. He's quite experienced in terms of Treasury matters. And he made a really good point as well. He argued that Trump, right, it's not just about his policies. He's not going to be seeking election again. Now, he didn't actually say whether he meant that as in, well, this is Trump's second term, so he can't, or that there would be no further elections until he keels over, as some people fear doesn't really matter what he meant the point he's subtly making is Trump doesn't need to care about public opinion because he does not expect to go to the polls again I would even venture that because Trump also doesn't care about the Republicans because a second term president 
often still cares about their party and they want to give usually their vice president, but whoever's going to be the next candidate for their party, a good uh, electoral legacy, should we say. Trump doesn't care about that. After he's gone, he doesn't care about anyone else. And Glenn further pointed out the strength of Trump's position in terms of his mandate. He won the popular vote, I assume is what he's alluding to. And support from Congress. The Republicans now control that. And, and this is what has got people worried. If Trump does something, and let's say it becomes wildly unpopular, the only people who would necessarily care might be other Republicans. It wouldn't be Trump. And that is my main hope, by the way, in all honesty, that although Trump won't care, he needs supporters in Congress and they could turn on some of his policies if it's leading to public unrest. But if it doesn't lead to public unrest, if, if he gaslights the public into thinking, actually, this is just the tail end of Biden's legacy or something like that, he blames all the negative stuff on Biden, then, it, you know, he can pretty much do what he wants. But there are lots of unknowns now, and we have to assume that whatever Trump is going to do, well, we are, first of all, we have to assume whatever he wants to do, he can do. We just don't know what he wants to do. We know he talked a lot about things like tariffs and so on. But maybe he can be persuaded to focus on his domestic agenda and leave the international stuff alone for a bit. You know, maybe he can't. Maybe he can. We don't know. But it seems odd to insist that there will be no more money from borrowing or taxes for the rest of the parliament at any time. And especially at a time when we've just had an event occur, which is likely to lower not just forecast, but the actual growth. So obviously Reeves believes it's important to give businesses and investors the confidence that no more surprises come in. I know ahead of the election, lots of business leaders were saying, actually, what we really, what we don't, we don't like budgets every year. We'd actually just like one budget of parliament. Could you just have a budget per parliament? So, no way. so Reeves is sort of doing that. We get that. That's giving investors confidence, sure. But, but does she... Is, does she mean that she really thinks that, you know, there's more than enough of her own expectations of growth to cope with a rogue Trump in terms of both the trade war and withdrawal from Ukraine? Is she saying that if anything happens to hit growth more than she's expecting, it will be something that nobody could have foreseen and therefore she'd be justified in making changes to the budget in, say, three or four years' time? And then having to say for a second time that she was wrong not to anticipate further tax rises, but that people would understand. I mean, I guess we'll have to wait and see. But I think it's a very bold statement yesterday to insist that the budget is now fine and we now must live within our means. No more tax rises, no more um, uh, borrowing. On the same day, we found out that Donald Trump is going to be let loose on the biggest economy in the world. And what Rachel Reeves says is our most important trading partner. But there we are. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, please click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, you can join for memberships. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'll see you later.